Hello. Um, very, very quick video. The lady's asleep. I have to be very quiet. Um, just a quick video showing a pretty simple build for the steam turbine. Uh, recently started tinkering with the um, pre-release build of the occupational update myself and thought I'd have a quick jump on debug and get a build working for the steam turbine. So, very simply, I'll just show how the build works first and then I'll turn it on and show you what it does. So, we've got a couple of different chambers here. The top chamber is just some sculpting blocks that are used as like a heat exchanger if you like, um, with some wheeze warts. Um, in there we've got two kilos of hydrogen, or just under two kilos of hydrogen in places, slightly over in others. Um, and all this is doing is acting as like a little cooling chamber for us. Underneath that we've got some mechanised airlocks, three in a row, and the centre one is on a spot of automation to basically create a void or a vacuum um, when the middle airlock is shut and opened. If an airlock is closed, it can transfer temperature. If it's open, it doesn't, weirdly. But anyway, um, this will all be explained in a minute. Uh, beneath here, we've got the main turbine room where we've got a steam turbine. Um, currently, it does have some steam in there, but you'll see why in a second. I basically pumped in a couple of kilos of water, but you could just have a valve in the top dripping in a little bit as do the same thing. Um, and then underneath the turbine, we've got our metal tiles, a liquid tepidizer with a little bit of hydrogen in the corner. Again, just like two kilos of hydrogen, just as if you trap some in there. Basically, pump your liquids in from this end when there's hydrogen underneath here, it'll end up in this end in a bubble. Dead easy. Um, over here, we've got our main circuitry. Um, I'll show you the automation side of it in a minute, but the main circuitry, dead simply, we've got our um, turbine connected with heavy watt wire to a heavy conductive joint plate. There's a void in here um, just to stop any temperature transference. So you just make that a vacuum first and then pump, uh, put your other tiles in, just using the diagonal tile trick. That's then connected to a single battery, a single smart battery. Uh, sorry, two smart batteries go into a transformer. And the transformer is just signifying where you could pull your circuits off, basically. On this, In this uh, case, we've got one circuit, and that's going to another smart battery, which then goes to our tepidizer. Okay, These bridges are just to aid with some temperature transference, that's it. Um, over the top of the tepidizer we've got about 500 kilos of oil. Again, you can just pump it in by, by pitcher pumps if you want uh, you know, the pump drop off points. Um, dead easy to do, dead easy to set up. So, on the circuit itself we have a smart battery and that is connected with um, automation. So, the main battery bank has this one battery that's connected with automation to an AND gate this AND gate, this might get a bit confusing, but it doesn't, it's not actually that tricky, just stay with me. This AND gate basically gives either a signal of on, um, but it's also paired with this thermo sensor down here, which is submerged in the oil next to the tepidizer. This will only output a signal to the tepidizer if both signals are on, okay? Basically, it's an AND gate. This AND, that means on, simple as that. However, that then feeds into another AND gate, okay? which is waiting for another signal, which is with this little oscillator thing down here, which is rapidly toggling the signal on and off for the tepidizer. Okay? That signal comes from a thermo sensor, which is in the room, which is sensing the pressure, uh, the temperature of the steam and the water that's within the room, which is also tied to the main battery right at the beginning, which can overwrite the entire signal itself. Okay? This is on an OR gate down here. I think it's an OR gate. Yeah. Um, it sounds complicated. I'm going to attach the debug, uh, the save file, so you can have a look at it yourself if you want. It's dead simple. But if I turn it on now, you'll see what it does. So I'm going to unpause now. And what's basically going to happen is when these batteries are depleted below a certain level, so if we say um, once they are less than 80% charged, okay, uh, what will basically happen is these doors will shut which will allow the temperature to be cooled, okay, through the metal tiles, the doors, our water, our steam will start condensing and it'll drip down as water, okay? At which point the water will drip off the little platform of the steam turbine, it'll drop down both sides and it'll hit this hot plate and start turning back into steam. Now the beauty of this design is the water drips down both sides, condenses in the middle, evaporates into steam and creates a little bubble of steam in the middle. At least that's what should happen. So if I unpause this now, now currently our batteries are full, so nothing's happening. The temperature isn't being transferred, the steam is staying as steam. But if I put down a few batteries, 
I'll just pause it to do this so you can see what happens instantly. Um, these main battery banks are going to deplete. They're going to fill up these batteries. And when these are empty, you'll notice this door shuts. And then our steam will start condensing. And that's when the turbine will start working. It's basically so that the room stays primed and ready to go at short notice. So you'll see what happens. It might be a bit noisy with the automation, just to warn you. But you'll see what happens now. So these should start to empty. At which point, this door is now closed. Which means that our temperature will start transferring through the doors. Okay. Which means that our steam will start turning back into water. And then the water will eventually meet in the middle here and create a steam bubble. And you'll see our steam turbine is now spinning up. Okay. Now we're generating power. Now, as soon as these batteries are filled, okay, these batteries will start to backfill as well, at which point it'll toggle the system off again and this door will open. That's what will happen. So you'll see now we've got our water converged in the middle. We've got steam here at 26 kilos of steam. Bear in mind, we've only got a little bit of water in the room. So all our steam is here. The steam turbine only works if you've got more steam below it than above it. And it says so in the notes here. If there is at least 3000 grams more steam below it than above it, it'll work. So ours is fine. So you'll see, once these are filled up, these will start to backfill, and then we can actually watch through our automation what will happen. So these are filling up now. And what I'll just explain, what's going on over here, we've got a little not gate and a buffer. You can find all this stuff on the forums. There's a very good thread um, called Useful Automation Gadgets by Cynical Business. Uh, I'll put a link in the description as well. Have a look on there. Uh, this is what's called a pulse clock, apparently. And all you do is change your buffer gate down here to whatever you want. I turned it down to three seconds because it was really annoying me. But you can turn it down to like, well, I don't want that. So I turned it right down. Um, but yeah, as these batteries start filling back up now, you'll see the signal will change. There we go. And what that's basically done is told the tepidizer not to fire. We don't need this to be firing yet unless we get a signal from over here, which is basically going to keep the room at a certain temperature. These thermo switches are set to specific temperatures. If it's below 122, output a signal. If it's below 134, output a signal. Simple as that. And then, yeah, that's our, our batteries charged up. We can do the same thing again if I get rid of these batteries. So you'll notice now the airlocks are open. This is just going to stay hot. There's no, no way for the temperature to be lost. If we put down some more batteries, I'll just use some smart batteries. Uh, bah, bah, bah. I'm trying to do this quickly before I wake the dragon. Uh, yeah, you'll see now the door will lock again and it'll just go through the same process. So what this is basically symbolizing is if you were using the power elsewhere in your base, your two kilowatts that this thing generates, because it's a fucking monster, um, as and when you were using power, it would be running constantly. When you didn't need the power, it'd turn off. And I built this in a way that it's sort of modular, so you can rebuild it dead easy. It doesn't seem to consume the steam from what I've seen so far, but if it did, all you need to do is have a little valve in the middle here, a, li a little vent, a um, little valve before the vent and drip feed in however much water you needed to, but seems spot on. The, the reason I think this works so well is because the steam's all collecting in the middle here, because it's converging down one, down both sides. It meets in the middle and you get a big pocket of steam. So I'll put the um, I'll put everything in my description. If you want to download it, have a look. If you can improve on it, please do send me what you've improved on. Um, I don't know if anybody else has posted anything like this because honestly I'm a bit behind on the forums and stuff. But I've only started tinkering with this update in the last couple of days and I'm really having a bit of fun with it. So I hope this helps. I hope you like it. Um, again, any tips or improvements you've got, please do let me know. Much love. Bye-bye.